everyone. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Coming up here next on RPV City Talk, we'll be joined with Councilman Steve Wallowich and the city's finance and information technology director, Dennis McLean. The topic of conversation is the McCarroll Canyon Storm Drain Project. You won't want to miss it. Stay with us. and welcome to RPV City Talk. Today we're going to talk to city leaders about an issue that impacts the entire community, and that is the city's ongoing efforts to make critical repairs to the city's storm drain system. Now topping the list is the McCarroll Canyon Storm Drain Project. This project is vital to preventing future flooding like the disaster that occurred back in this community in 2005. And to talk about this project, joining me here in studio, I'm pleased to introduce City Council Member Steve Wallowich. Thanks Thank for you. being here. And the City's Finance Information Technology Director, Dennis McLean. Thank you. Thanks for being a gentleman. Before we get started, I want to let our viewers know that we have a wonderful interview coming up with a key player in this, and that is, of course, Jim Bell, who is the City's Public Works Director. We're going to meet up with him out at McCarroll Canyon, and he's going to give us a great play-by-play -play that puts the pieces of this project together. So in the meantime, let's get started. We've got lots to talk about. Most importantly, back at your December meeting, um, the council voted unanimously to move the McCarroll Canyon Improvement Project forward. And I guess eight years earlier than planned, that's huge. Very exciting for you. Yes, actually, it, it was. I mean, there's a number of things that, that are involved with the McCarroll Canyon. The, the, co the comments that I made during that meeting, um, and Jim Bell was able to inform me prior to the meeting, I, I went on the tour. I mean, you'll get a chance to see that on uh, uh, the interview. And it was, uh, it was the first time that we felt that we could actually take proactive steps. We were, we were on offense. We were not necessarily back on our heels playing defense. And it was a nice thing to see that presentation that Jim and his department uh, came up with. I mean, it, it took them a while to formulate it, but it was heartening to see that. The project, I've heard around $5 million. Um, you're in charge of finances for the city, Dennis. Talk about how this package is all coming together to uh, to finance it, especially since you're doing it eight years earlier than the city thought. That's right. And, you know, when this program was first developed in 2003, the McCarroll Canyon project was indeed scheduled to be performed out in 2016, give or take. We needed to accumulate, you know, $5 million over three or four years to do the project. And I mean, three to four million, five million dollars of storm drain fee money. And after the winter storms of 2005, we realized that it was urgent to move this project forward. The council agreed, and we've used general fund monies, um, five million dollars of general fund monies, and even in December, the city council decided to add another $850,000 of general fund reserves and made an adjustment on the Sunnyside Ridge project to reduce that project budget by $1.3 million to enable us to now do a $5 million project. That was a huge adjustment in the Sunnyside Ridge project. Was How did that change, for example, that project? It's still going ahead as you want, it's, but for a lot cheaper. Well, it's, it's one of, it's one of the, the three backbone projects that we talk about. Um, McCarroll Canyon, certainly, um, which Mother Nature reprioritized a lot of the work that we were doing. Uh, Sunnyside Ridge and then Terrapaca, and uh, each one is a story unto itself. Um, preceded, um, and we we went to school or had Mother Nature take us to school on San Ramon, so we were well familiar with the issues that that um, preceded our our current situation. But what was nice to see was the fact that Jim's department, given the time, was able to reassess the Sunnyside Ridge. We're not not doing the work; it's just that the amount of work and the the nature of it. Um, uh, has been been able to be re-engineered so that funds that were originally budgeted, um, we still have to do the work. Now we have to just do it on the Carroll Canyon. And as we continue to talk about the funding for a minute, I want to go back to you, Dennis, because um, I read when this project came forward, I assumed that it, we just passed back in November the uh, storm drain user fee, of course, the council member, you were very supportive in getting that going and, and getting the community to support that. We intended to use the storm drain fee entirely for the McCarroll Canyon project. And of course, with you know, as I said before, with the urgency, it made sense for staff, our consultants, to work together and take a program to the city council, uh, encourage them to use general fund reserves, uh, and the council decided to do so. 
uh, to enable us to do this project now. Right. Steve, I mentioned, um, I mentioned we're going to be hearing from um, Jim Bell, the public works director, a little later on. But could you, for our viewers out there that aren't familiar even where McCarroll Canyon is, give us a little bit of a scene setter and describe a little bit of the history and why this is such a problem spot right now. Well, uh, and, and by the way, I should preface my remarks by saying that having been on the Finance Committee prior to being on the City Council, I've learned more about storm drains than I ever wanted to know. And and the route coming down from McCarroll Canyon, it starts out as rather, inno- it, what's visible is a rather innocuous spot where it crosses PV Drive South. But it really starts at the top of the hill, right below Crest, and it comes through, there's a Southern California Edison site there, uh, over PV Drive South, by St. Peter's, by the sea, uh, and then there are some streets that, that move down um, to the to the bluffs and then uh, it exits out by the Bay Club. That almost sounds like the path that Little Red Riding Hood took. Um, I think that this path was probably a little bit more treacherous than the one she had to put up with. But that that's the segment um, of McCarroll Canyon, and that's why it, it literally is a backbone project. And it was that neighborhood below Palos Verdes Drive South around St. Peter's by the Sea, Sea Cove, that was severely impacted by that flooding I think there were about 300 families that are in that area as well? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, in February 2005, in bracing for the storms in advance, uh, the then city manager and the director of public works started uh, determining where in our hill, because our city is so large uh, that we were concerned about problem areas. We we saw firsthand, I, I got a call about 3.30 that morning. I ended up going out with, with Dean Allison. He, he said, if you really want to see what's happening... And then from that, we, um, we went and then picked up the then mayor, Larry Clark. Uh, we then later on reconvened a, a special urgency city council meeting. We ended up going down to see that neighborhood, and uh, we watched the, the, the water damage over PV Drive South. Um, St. Peter's by the Sea parking lot was flooded, uh, and then we saw a, an entire neighborhood, several streets, where the water got into the lower levels of homes, and it really created quite a, um, quite a bit of problems for a lot of folks. It was interesting seeing the neighborhood pull together, but we had the fire department, county fire was out there pump, um, pumping water out. The impact, indeed, was not lost on us, and that's really when we learned that issues like this are not to be taken lightly. Right, and this is the perfect time, I think, to take a little break and, and share with our viewers out there. During the December meeting, which, in fact, the city voted this project for, you had some very compelling testimony from prominent residents, including Pastor Clayton Cobb from St. Peter's by the Sea, whose home was damaged, and also Bill Webster with the Bay Club. They also were very impacted. So let's take a minute just to listen to what they had to say about why McCarroll Canyon improvements must be made now. This program is of vital, vital importance to all of us who live at the Bay Club. Two years ago, the amount of water that came down from McCarroll Canyon and came down Seaco, poured over the walls and poured over the curbs and sandbags and eroded our cliff. We have to count on what you and Jim Bell and his people are going to do to assure that we never have that kind of water flow coming down Seagate uh, into our property and over our cliff. And I don't think I've ever <coughs> run into any more competent engineers. I'm an engineer myself, and it's been a pleasure to work with these men, and I thoroughly appreciate what they've done and this plan, and I would hope that the council would help move this forward so that come next winter, we don't have to flip the dice again on all that water that we saw two years ago, and thank you very much. Thank you for your time, and I come this night speaking really with two perspectives. One, a personal one, I am a resident of number two packet, and one of those who awoke to 30 inches of water in my bedroom on that fateful night. Um, That was the sideline. I never realized how many flood metaphors there are in the Bible, and there are more than I ever imagined. (laughs) Know that firsthand. So I have a personal interest in seeing a thorough and appropriate solution, Uh, but all that, that's one. But the second reason I'm here tonight is I speak on behalf of our congregation, St. Peter's by the Sea Presbyterian Church. Again, I'm grateful for the leadership of your city staff, and we bring our support to this proposal. Obviously, those two gentlemen are thrilled that you're moving ahead with the improvements in McCarroll Canyon. Your thoughts when you were listening to their testimony that evening? Well, I think it's most appropriate that um, uh, Reverend Cobb would, would speak about that for two reasons. 
number one, it's not by accident that insurance companies do list floods under acts of God. How appropriate we have a spokesperson. Uh, but secondly, he was, he was there uh, and he was really affected by the water damage at the time. As, as we were inspecting houses that day, we, we got to Reverend Cobb's home. I mean, we met with him uh, at St. Peter's by the Sea discussing the damage at the church, but we could see firsthand the damage that it was done to his home. What was remarkable, I have to say this about Reverend Cobb and his family, was the fact that they were they started to be a focal point. People were bringing them things. They had mm -hmm. events going on that afternoon, and, um, and you could see the impact that this had on families. Um, Bill Webster um, later... Um, came to us during a testimony at, at um, the city council meetings, and it was remarkable how our, how well he articulated the support. First of all, the recognized problems that it had on his on his community, uh, his local community, and then um, supporting the actions that the city council was taking and that uh, the plans were made. Uh, I thought that was quite insightful. To, to hear from residents. I mean, he, he, was, he was typical. He was a perfect spokesperson for them. And um, it re reminded us how important it was for us to deal with this problem. Anything you want to add to that, Dennis? Yeah, I, was, I actually went down there the day after the storms. In fact, that's the day that I met Bill Webster. Um, the lives of a number of our residents were affected by that storm. Um, in fact, there were $12 million of property claims brought against the city as a result of those winter storms. It, it just heightened the urgency of needing to move forward with the project. It's been a, a cooperative, collaborative um, project with the residents in that community, including Bill, including Reverend Cobb and other members of the neighborhood. And it's just nice to see the project moving forward. All right. One thing I know, Bill, Bill note is a, an engineer, as is, of course, yeah. who we're going to be hearing from next, the key player in all of this, is in fact Jim Bell, who is the City Public Works Director. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, you won't want to miss Jim's story as he walks us through McCarroll Canyon, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Does your child have asthma? Did you know asthma attacks can be triggered by things like shower curtains? A child's blanket even a teddy bear. Help prevent your child's asthma attacks. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS or visit noattacks.org to get the latest information and avoid the emergency room. I don't want to feel like a fish with no water. Welcome back to RPV City Talk. Again, here with me in studio, studio is Councilmember Steve Wallowich and our Finance Information Director, Technology Director, Dennis McLean. We're continuing to talk about McCarroll Canyon. And of course, coming up is Jim Bell, who I went out to um, at McCarroll Canyon. He's marvelous. The city hired him a year ago, about a year ago. Your thoughts on him? He put this project uh, on the table for you eight years earlier than planned. Uh, first of all, um, we were quite heartened when Jim came on board. And he had to hit the ground running. Now, much to his credit, um, um, Les Evans had started to set the tone after the prior uh, finan uh, finance director. Boy, I, I talk <laughs> about finance and and public works. This was inter interwoven. So, um, getting somebody, we had a temporary um, a public works director, but then when we were able to find Jim and have him come on board, and he um, recognized immediately the importance of the issue and the need to provide the right kind of study for it and, and to not be trapped into any preconceived notion as to what should be done. So what we saw with Jim's ideas was the fact that he was going to apply um, a lot of new technology to now existing um, situations, and we were heartened by the results of it. Also, again, Mother Nature you know, somewhat set the, the uh, timetable by saying you had to address these things, and, and which we've been doing. All right. I think you're going your thoughts on what Jim Bell's doing here for sure. the city. Jim sure. and I work well together. Jim's department and my department work well together. Uh, we have to work with an oversight committee for the storm drain program. And, you know, Jim's energy, his effort in taking the program in continuing to revise the dynamic program that it needs to be as we discover new problems has really enabled us to, to move this program to where we're at today, including the McCarroll Canyon project. All right, with that, I think we should uh, we'll move on to Jim Bell and let's go meet with him at McCarroll Canyon. So take it away, Jim. 
Good morning. I'm really pl pleased this morning to bring forward to the community the McCarroll Canyon Drainage Project. And I've been with the city about a year and a half now. And this is a project that the city council really focused upon. This is one that they asked that I take a look at when I came on board of the city. Uh, so we're very pleased to bring forward a package that's really very well designed. It really provides the neighborhood solution that we had anticipated. Uh, it's not yet in construction yet. We're just finalizing the design plans. Uh, this city council deemed this project, you know, a top priority for the city. Why do you think this is a top priority? In 2005, there actually was a damage uh, situation in the rainstorm. We had very high rainfall events in the in the winter of 2005, and there was a number of homes flooded. There was some overtopping of the bluff, and actually it was a localized area of, of bluff failure uh, that was was uh, that actually happened in 2005. So for those impacted directly, they are very eager to see this project built. In fact. Uh, at the city council meeting, a number of the people that, that faced those damages came in to testify to how much they appreciated this project. And so we're very, very pleased to bring it forward and on this accelerated schedule. Projects like this are so valuable for the community because, of course, when it is raining, you can't go out and build it immediately. It's the proper planning. It's the designs effort required. And it's also the funding to go forward with the projects. It takes about a year to design a project. It takes about a year to build a project. This uh, McCarroll Canyon project was really slated for 2016 to begin design. Uh, we're happy to bring a completed design in 2007. So we're going to bid in 2008, and we have the full intention of building this project by the end of this year. So it should be ready before the rains of, of uh, 2009 or late 2008. Just over my shoulder to the, to the left, uh, you'll, you'll see the McCarroll Canyon uh, formation. This is a very steep canyon. This is about a 450-acre uh, drainage area. It's uh, steep. It uh, is very concentrated flow. So it, it poses a community threat. And uh, we're, we're, of course, as I said before, pleased to bring a design that uh, is going to properly channel these flows into, into the ocean outlet. You can actually see the steeple for St. Peter's uh, Presbyterian Church. And, of course, that's the, uh, the area that received the flow uh, initially once crossing the uh, PV Drive South. And I think with the project we're proposing today, we're so uh, uh, confident that we have a design that's going to do the job for the people. So we're pleased to bring it forward. I think with this project, we're looking at bringing forward uh, some embedderments also. We're looking at Along the corridor, we've got, we're sitting on the Tarragon property, that uh, the headwaters for the McCarroll Canyon. We're going to be putting the improvements in to basically uh, integrate with a trail concept. So part of the flood control improvements will be disguised as a trail and actually perform as a trail. And you can see the trail connections in this area that are so important to the community. But having a safeguarded community with the amenities is the best situation. This project, we feel, will do both. And uh, the, the storm drain improvements will be mostly underground. You won't see those components after they're built. They'll function basically just silently. But what we'll be left with is basically an amenitized corridor. And this is what I think would be wonderful for the communities to have it. The problem solved and have the area look much more improved. We also believe this is a project that can merit national recognition. So. And you'll submit this for a National Public Works Award. What would uh, put that in the category? Is it um, just that it's so innovative, what you're doing? It's a combination of innovation and community benefit, and also we believe value for the dollar. And uh, similar projects, the city actually won national awards on the PVIC. This is the, the Whale Watching Center. And that was just last year that we received national awards for that, that uh, project. This one, we feel, is that kind of a project. It's a tremendous community need. It's a real success project for the community. We're, we're so uh, pleased to bring it forward at this time. Um, this project, describe more of what will actually take place to put it together and the challenges. Um, I know you took me down by the Bay Club where you'll be digging underground. Explain what needs to be done to make this happen. Well, much of the work has been in the design part of it. Obviously, working with the uh, key stakeholders, or rights of ways, you know, it actually goes through a portion of the church uh, parking lot. It does go through the Bay Club. We had to coordinate uh, the rights of ways through those properties. 
also it's coming out with the best design, one that, you know, that really deals with the problem and minimally really in, uh, is minimally, disru- minimally disruptive to the community. So we're looking at something that does the job and, and does the f- job efficiently and effectively. So that took, that took a while to put together the documents, the plan documents to do that. I believe there's a $5 million price tag on the project. Um, and explain that, how that is a great price for the community to pay to what they're going to get, the benefit from it. Sure. The uh, project estimate is in the range of 5 to $5.5 million. And uh, the, when you think about what is protected by this project, we feel it's very cost effective. The area has 300 families living in it, uh, 300 families in this specific area. Uh, property values, we estimate somewhere in the range of $250 million of the property of area that directly benefits by this project. So although it's expensive, when you really think about what we're protecting, it's very valued. Now, if you think about the community that uses PV Drive South to commute to their work centers, their churches, their shopping, frankly, it affects much or all of the community. So this project benefits all people in the community from that standpoint, too. You know, when you think about what is protected also, it really comes down to people. Every one of our citizens deserves to be protected best. And this project serves people primarily. Their families, their children, sleeping at night with the confidence that they have an appropriate project to protect them. Also, you think about the beautiful backdrop that we have, the ocean's edge. You know, a bluff condition is, is something really to be safeguarded. So pr- protecting the area from overflows is very, very important. Anything you want to add you want the community to know about this project that we didn't discuss at this point that you think is relevant? I think really what it is, we appreciate the community support. You know, it, until it rains, people don't think about the, the danger that face them. But nationally, flooding is one of the chief killers of uh, people. It is one of the areas that people really need to be protected by. And the solutions are expensive. So having the community commitment to go forward with, with projects to solve these problems is very, very important. Having a city council that gets behind these solutions, for me is, is, as a public works director, is so important. I think to have a united council and community to bring forward solutions like this really is uh, the, is appropriate for the community. Well, after spending some time out at McCarroll Canyon with Jim Bell, he obviously has a massive undertaking. He's thinking positive, moving forward, but he's got to have challenges ahead of him. What are you thinking about some of the concerns and challenges that will face him as he takes this on? Well, uh, I'll preface my remarks by saying uh, Jim was kind enough to give me that, that tour through, uh, through McCarroll Canyon and, and to see um, firsthand what it was he was talking about. After we had seen it during the height of the damage, you know, during 2005. So two issues come to mind. One is, he is, and he was the first to admit, he said, we, we have this plan, but we're likely to encounter issues that we don't anticipate. I mean, you dig through Palos Verde's um, ge- geology, and as we know here, you could encounter something that, mm-hmm. that um, uh, wasn't necessarily on your list of, of issues. The second thing is, Mother Nature has a way of establishing priorities as she sees fit, and we learned that in February 2005 as to where our focus had been on, on other areas within our, our neighborhood, our, within our city. So that's, what's on, that's what Jim has to deal with, I, I think. It is certainly a concern that we have because this takes, this uses resources in Jim's, uh, in Jim's parlance in terms of labor, his own staff, the people that we're going to hire, but also in terms of what Dennis deals with, and that's resources of a monetary nature. So those things can happen unexpectedly, and demands all of a sudden require that we're fighting issues on several fronts. Hopefully, we'll have time, Jim will have time to focus on one. But they still, nevertheless, uh, as we enter the, the wintertime seasons, uh, we have to be concerned about what it is we don't know. Right. We won't get into talking about staffing, but I know he mentioned he has 10 people in this department, so he's got a lot to do with, with the 10 people. Yes. Um, what about your thoughts after, I mean, from a financial point of view, any can things that you could be a roadblocks in the future for this project? Or? Yeah, I mean, the project is about to go out uh, for bid. <laughs> okay. um, so we don't know what the final bid results are going to be. We don't know what the final cost is going to be. Let's hope there aren't any surprises. We don't anticipate any. Um, and once this is all done, the agreement's signed with the contractors, we all have to realize it's a construction site. 
Um, mm -hmm. So there is there is going to be noise. There are going to be some limitations, you know, for access from time to time. But you know, I, I'm encouraged. I mean, this this neighborhood, this community has been very support very supportive of this right. project and. Um, you know, we'll all work together. All right. With that note, we're going to take another quick break, come back with some final thoughts on the McCarroll Canyon Storm Improvement Project. Don't go away. When you fill someone's life with hope, you wind up adding a little more to your own. Help America's youth. Be a friend. Be a mentor. Just be there. Go to bigbrothersbigsisters.org. All right, as we're about to wrap up our program here on the city storm drain issues, of course, um, I have to say that it's raining out. We're in winter. It is the rainy season. Hopefully, it will be a dry one. Um, final thoughts and wanting the viewers, our residents, to know other programs, issues that are going to come up with storm drains this year. Well, I, I, I've, boy, I'm going to stammer on this because there's so many thoughts that come to mind right away. Yeah. First, first things first is the fact that we've got the major repairs, and we've got McCarroll Canyon right at the top of the list. We are still, um, although um, work is being um, re-engineered for it, Sunnyside Ridge is still a concern, uh, in long-term uh, Terrapaka Canyon. Those are our big items. But ongoing, the issues that we have, the relining of uh, storm drains, we've seen that throughout the community. Uh, Any time that we enter into the rainy season, I, I made reference to it before, there is a great unknown issue called um, uh, Mother Nature and what it is that she can hold in store for us. So we go forward into, I, I've learned about any ra rainy season from two years ago. I view them differently now. Okay, and you're not going to do a rain dance here for us? Well, I've been doing my anti-rain dance, and my family <laughs> was greatly concerned whether or not I'd bring my outfit out here today and, and do that. But I think time is limited, so not today. Well, we'll appreciate that. And your final thoughts, too, Dennis, as you work through this project and the projects the city will face. Yeah, well, I, I just want to remind everyone that this is a 10-year program. We're collecting about $1.2 million a year. Uh, we plan it in five-year increments. Uh, the five-year plan is reviewed by the oversight committee that you know, was created by the city council and, and actually enacted by the voters of Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, and the challenges ahead is the unknown. Um, as we go forward, um, we're going to learn more about the system we're going to discover more project needs, and the project is a dynamic one that will change. Uh, and we're all working together to get as much done as we can, as quickly as we can. Well, I appreciate all your insight, and we will bring you back on. You can update us as this project moves forward, and of course, and all the other issues in the city. Thanks again for being here and all you're doing. And with that, we're going to wrap up this edition of RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for watching.